We are off on a camper van trip. We're going right over to the far west. We're going over to uh, Cornwall. Oh, camper vanning. We're man, woman, non-binary, agender, pangender, queer gender, two spirit, third gender, all of, none of, or a combination of these, and machine, all come together for a few days to escape the rat race and live a more simple, rustic life, like a northerner. <laughs> That's what the brochure says anyway. What the brochure doesn't mention are the two worst things about camper vanning. <laughs> Crowding is the subjective feeling of stress that arises from living in a tiny space with other people. It can feel like everything is magnified and there's no escape. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, just get out of the van then. Tell the kids to bugger off and climb a tree or something. Well, that leads me seamlessly onto the second thing that the brochure doesn't tell you about camper vanning. We have finally got here. It took about three and a half hours. Oh, uh, father. Can you just quickly tell me what we're doing right now? So we're about to walk to me, go down the side, normal spurly side. Our plan was to stay in Cornwall for two nights, but we decided to cut it short because of the second thing. Rain is the bane of a camper van trip. The problem is rain transforms the great outdoors into a muddy swamp, and that muddy swamp, with the help of kids and dogs, infiltrate your living space. We've only done a handful of camping trips, but I'd say about 50% of them have been rained off, and we've left early because of the rain. This is one of them. Girls are doing TikTok, and we ruined it. You ruined their TikTok? We did this in the background. I got some really interesting chat. The plot that we're on is on a slight, like, tilt. And I can't handle that slight tilt. It's just making everything feel wrong. I don't like the tilt. Oh, I don't know if I can live with the tilt. Can Steph live with the tilt? It adds drama. I mean, how much I clean your eyes are always muddy. That's brilliant drama. AI is going to destroy us. <laughs> bit of a rainy old morning in Cornwall today um, but luckily we are only about an hour's drive from the Eden project and we've never been so we're gonna go check that out oh my god the ham's frozen as well oh no my fridge is freezing everything the Eden Project is an educational charity and botanical gardens located in Cornwall, England. It features two large biomes, the rainforest biome and the Mediterranean biome, that simulates different climates and house over a thousand varieties of plants. Coleslaw's frozen. Oh. <laughs> so I guess the biggest lesson I've learned about owning a camper van in the UK is unless you're so bloody hardcore that you don't mind using a bunched up sock for a pillow or defecating in a bush in the middle of the night like a northerner, then it's great. You'll love it. But if you're a delicate southern fairy like us, and find yourself spiraling into a mental health crisis at the mere hint of drizzle, then you'll probably hate it. That said, between May and October, they are worth their weight in gold, when there's far less chance of rain or acute hypothermia. Oh, and what helps with the crowding side of things is sound counselling headphones. Because being stuck in a box with a nine-year-old who never shuts up about Prime, or a five-year-old who could whinge for England, you can avoid all of those cortisone spikes by putting on your sound counselling headphones, and you can sit back and just pretend you're dead. In these boxes, I have a solution to a very modern problem, which I think we probably can all relate to. So I'm gonna open them up and show you what's inside. Before I do that, I just wanna say that this is such an incredible idea and I really wish that I had come up with this idea myself. I wish these were my products. Let's get them open. Don't know what that was. So last week, my friend Neil invited my friend Jason and I, that's this sexy bugger, on a sailing trip on his boat in Greece. I've never sailed before, so it's always been a box that I've wanted to tick. I'm gonna edit the full vlog over the next couple of weeks, but I'm gonna use a few shots in this video to address something while it's still fresh in my mind. While I was on the boat, I had a lot of time just to think. I don't often get a lot of time to think because in normal life, I've, well, I've got far too many distractions. And all of these distractions are served up on this little slate that I carry around in my pocket. Okay. And I'm starting to feel as if like all of these distractions are stealing something from me. My time. On this trip, I thought a lot about that. Like why is my phone addiction affecting my perception of time? So this is the first one. Ooh, what could it be? What could it be? <laughs> Sometimes I feel as if I've been staring at the sun for so long that I've blinded myself from anything that actually really matters. This 
is the first one. I'm going to confess something that's really embarrassing. My screen time tells me that some days I clock over eight hours a day on my phone. This is so cool. Okay. This is time I could be playing with my kids, hugging my wife, writing a song, writing some of my book, coming up with new video ideas. But instead, I'm distracting myself with pointless noise as my world unfolds around me. I love this. I think this is so cute. And it's got a little combination here. I will tell you what these are in a minute. <laughs> While I was on the boat, I hardly touched my phone and that gave me time to question what it is that draws me to it so much. Why is it when I know how bad it is for me, do I feel such a strong gravitational pull towards it? Like all of us, we're running on biological software and like all software, it can be hacked. The apps on our phones really only want one thing from us and that's our time. Oh, this is pretty. I like this a lot. I really like this one. And as a reward for our time, it will give us endless supplies of that sweet neurotransmitter we call dopamine. And that got me thinking, couldn't that be why my perception of time feels like it's increasing? My phone leaves no time for space. These are called lock boxes and they are by a company called Bag and Bones. We absolutely love their stuff. Um, so, so thrilled to be working with them, especially on this product, because this is a lock box. Which makes sense because space and time are intrinsically connected. So how is this lock box going to help solve our modern problem? So our modern problem is basically that we're pretty much all addicted to our phones and to screen time, right? I don't feel like I have such an issue with this. I'm very regimented with my phone. I think because a lot of my work is on my phone, I tend to do what I've got to do and then get off. I don't like spending a lot of time on phones on screens um, however my husband has a massive phone addiction problem so that is where this lockbox comes in and it is just such a simple but genius idea so basically at a certain time of day maybe dinner time maybe in the evening you put your phones away in here you lock it up you put the combination on you can actually charge your phone in here as well you basically just don't have access to your phone for that little stretch of time. And I feel like if you have to go and put the combination in, you just know you've got a problem, right? It is kind of like a really cool piece of artwork sitting on your like side in your house. As someone in the creative space, like in the creative industry, it's really important to kind of give yourself this space this stretch of time where you're not distracted by anything or what other people are creating or emails or people pinging you or whatever you need that kind of empty space to kind of recuperate because quite often i find anyway that's when i'll have my best ideas or i'll think of something long term that i want to do that i wouldn't have thought of if i was filling all my time constantly with information I mean, the internet is such an incredible thing and the fact that we even have these like little mini computers in our pockets just blows my mind. But I feel like so many of us are not able to kind of regulate our time properly with them. And it's not just like about putting your phone away, it's about reclaiming your time. You're more present with your family, you're kind of more in the moment, you see and appreciate smaller things that you may not have noticed otherwise, you get more creative, you spend your time doing things that are actually worthwhile rather than just scrolling mindlessly through stuff that you probably don't really even care about. I would rather do anything, pretty much anything, other than spend my time scrolling. And I feel like probably my generation and people who are older than me know what it's like to live without that tech. Like we know what great childhoods we had without having access to everything all at once. Um, so I don't know, I feel like a little bit nostalgic about the time before tech was available so readily and so quickly and all the information was available to us. That's why I just love these products. If something so simple can help you to kind of enrich your life and help you take a step back from something that maybe isn't so good for you, then it can only be a good thing. I'm looking forward to actually putting this into practice and putting our phones in in the evening and just actually being really present and not even having that temptation. Anyway, I'm gonna pop a link to the lock boxes in the description below in case any of you are interested.
You know that new production company called Portrait Mode that I set up a while ago? Well, we were booked to shoot a pilot for my good friend Joe. So Look who I'm with, the lovely Joe Good. That's this sassy lady. She's a BBC radio presenter turned YouTube sensation. Grayson Perry wears things like this so yeah. and it hides the yeah. neck. I think you look wonderful. Thank I think you. you. I don't mind what goes wrong. I mean. She asked us to shoot a podcast interview with her and Zoella's mum, aka Tracy Suck, in her flat in London, which I won't lie, I was a little bit apprehensive about. You see, I'm not proud to say this, but over the past 10 years of being a social influencer, I've managed to offend most of my fellow creators. So I was a little bit worried that Tracy might get me in a headlock for a joke I made about Alfie Daisy's videos being worse than ISIS a few years ago. But luckily, she was super nice about it, and I escaped without a scratch. Just finished our shoot with Joe. Oh yeah, that went really well. Say goodbye to the Bitchat viewers. My dream was to be with these guys. I used to have him on my radio show all the time and it was my way of getting to know him. I still haven't met Hannah or the kids, but maybe We will. One day. We'll come up for dinner. Thank you. I love you later. Legend. Thank you so much. Anyway, I'll link the interview below if you want to go and check it out. Thanks to everyone for watching this week's video. Thanks to Bag and Bones for sponsoring us. All the links are in the dum dum diddly dum. Bye. Just made it on time. Where are you heading? Bath. No. Oh, thanks for letting me out. Shit.